Hey guys, welcome to the Gray State in episode two of my EDC series. As promised, I'm going to take the wrappers off a little bit and show you guys what I use on a more professional duty basis. Episode one was all about my off-duty day. I wanted to set that foundation, show you guys what actually translates over to a more professional side over in my role as a paramedic. And obviously, right now we're going through a super tough time with the whole COVID-19 uh, coronavirus pandemic. So I want to encourage you guys, you know, stay home, stay safe, make sure that you guys are taking care of yourself and your family, all that stuff. Leave the going out and dealing with the crud to myself and my peers, all the other first responders and emergency medical workers out there and hospital staffs. You know, this is something that's, it's unfortunate. It's unprecedented. It's one of those things too, where it's obviously on all of our minds, we're all going just a little bit stir crazy. So I want to keep creating videos. I want to show you guys what's being done or what I'm taking out to the front lines on a daily basis. So it is unfortunately maybe kind of an opportune time to do an update, show you some of the augmentations of what I'm thinking about on a daily basis as my loadout has changed from what was, you know, just normal, you know, two months ago or a month and a half ago to what we're thinking about now. So I'll kind of show you guys some of that stuff too. But the spirit of today really is just to kind of show you exactly what I'm doing. At one gig, I work two different places. My first one is going to be more of my urban light loadout. It's going to be the non-tactical stuff, but there's a lot of cool stuff in it. I'm going to show you what I use on a daily basis, everything from the ground up. Uh, and then uh, I'll go on to the more episode three will be more of the tactical stuff. I'll show you my plate carrier, stuff like that, what I carry and how I think about things. So with that being said, we're just going to get right into it. So first and foremost, from the ground up is what I kind of mentioned. So my boots. So I like Danner Torrent, uh, Striker Torrents. They're an eight inch Gore-Tex boot. They've been my boot of choice for about the last year and a half or so. Really like them. Light, comfortable, breathable, waterproof. Side zip. So it's really good from getting on and off from a quick perspective if I need to, especially when I want to ditch them. Uh, other boots that I do use are Solomon XA Forces Pros. Those are also Gore-Tex. They're mid-height. I tend to use those in the summer when it's really hot out just a little bit more. I've also used Red Wings. And then in addition to the Red Wings, I've also used Zamberlins, which are more of a traditional hiking boot that are also Gore-Tex if I need to, if I need something a little bit more robust with some traction and a little bit more beefier ankle support. So those are the boots. Pants, I generally wear two different pairs, either going to be Elbeco Tech 3s, which are a Teflon impregnated EMS specific pant. Uh, great for shedding stuff, not so great for heat. They tend to be a little toasty, a little uncomfortable, a little stiff sometimes when you first get them. Uh, but they're also kind of more of a general one size fit all cut. And then I also wear 511 EMS tactical pants. And then outside of that, I'm also looking right now to also maybe get some UF Pros. I've got those on order. I'm looking at a Combat XT and see how they translate over to the EMS world. Obviously a very expensive pair of pants, but I'll see how they go as far as EMS pants go. And I'll circle back on that for those of you that might be paramedics, medics, or just, you know, first responders in general looking for a good quality pant that tends itself to be a little bit more on the fitted side when you think of more like specialty type stuff. Well, I'll come back on that. So Tops, I use Elbecos or 511s. I um, mostly use Propers. It just depends on where I'm working on any given day. And uh, that's basically it. So from an overall uh, duty clothing perspective. All right, so now let's talk about some of the gear. So usually I break my stuff down. My pants are generally set up very similar between the two different places. And the first one on the, I've got cargo pants. I've got pockets and stuff like that. But generally on the outside at any moment's notice, I've got a couple of things that are available to me on any given day. So first and foremost, it's going to be PPE. I'm going to have lots of nitrile gloves. I carry both black and blue. And uh, black tends to look a little more tactical. There's no rhyme or reason to it. But the blues I do tend to use on traumas more often than the blacks because the blues do tend to show blood a lot easier if I'm doing sweeps. So that's a biggie for me. I want to make sure that I'm able to see and identify all the threats. So I carry both black and blues. Here's a pair of nitrile gloves, just so you guys, you've probably all seen them. But I just wanted to show you guys, uh, just for the whole completeness of the whole thing, I'm going to toss those over there. Speaking of gloves, usually on my front right thigh pocket, which you'll consider like the cargo pocket, the main one, I also have a pair of Mechanics Specialty Grip Gloves. They're a lightweight duty glove. They don't offer a lot of protection on the backside, but what they do have is an amazing grip texture here on the palms and the fingers that allow me to get a little bit more protection than a standard pair of nitrile gloves, but they're very light. They fold up very easily. I keep them in there, and more than anything, they give me the ability to get a really good grip on something. If I need to lift somebody, get somebody out of a way, or if I need to breach through a window, it gives me just enough protection so that I don't get shards of glass and I protect myself from all of the pieces of glass and stuff like that. So Mechanics Specialty Gloves, these are the grip version. Use these almost nearly every day. And one thing to note about them is they are not, for those of you guys who maybe are out in the field, they are not considered PPE. They, even though they do have a 
rubber shell on them and they, for all the grip pebbles and stuff like that. I do wipe them down regularly with uh, antibacterial and with you know the old wipes, but they are not considered a pathogen barrier because of the fact that they actually have a breathable surface on the back. So a little word of caution there on those, but great for if you need to use them for just lifting and stuff like that. All right, staying on my right side, now my front pocket, it's gonna be my knife, which if you guys watched my first video, and I'll put a link to it on this one at the end of it if you haven't seen it yet, which is my off-duty. I'm a big believer in keeping the same stuff that I use off-duty, on-duty, if I can, because it just translates really well, and I've just got muscle memory, and it's repetition, right? So for me, it's going to be a Benchmade Infidel. The only thing I didn't mention in my last video is the steel makeup of it. It is a D2 steel, and it's important for me because, yes, I can have done like an M390 or an S35B or something exotic like that. I like D2 steel. It doesn't corrode but it allows me to keep it clean all of the time. And the second thing is it's field sharp. I can sharpen it in the field if need be, which is a biggie for me. So service serviceability in the field is huge for me. So I do like my Infidel OTF. The downside to an out the front is it's pretty limited into what you can actually do as far as outside of it as a blade for a tool. So because of that, I do carry um, sometimes an alternate uh, folder with me. It's an automatic. It's also a Benchmade. It's a now discontinued APB. I've had it for a number of years. You guys can see how beat up it is but it is an automatic folder. Uh, things I like about it over the Infidel, it's got a serrated edge. Yeah, a lot of bladists, you know, blade heads, purists out there will say, well, you don't need a serrated edge. I will tell you what, when you want to cut through something like a bumper off of a car, there's nothing better than a serrated edge to a knife. And that being said, my partner can vouch for it. I actually have cut the remainder of a bumper off of a car with my Infidel. I know I've got people who are just cringing everywhere going, you did what with that knife? Yeah, I did it. I cut a bumper off of a minivan. Um, so it will work in a pinch, but I'd prefer to have a serrated edge for those moments. Uh, the other thing I like about this APB, it's a lot heavier than the Infidel, which might be a drag for some people. But for me, when you combine it with an actual legit carbide glass breaker on it, it just lends itself to really being able to whack through stuff. So the purchase of it, the weight of it, everything tends to be just a little bit heftier and a little bit more utilitarian in all of its... Um, unrefinedness. It just tends to do a couple of things a little bit better. It's also 154 CM steel on here, nothing super exotic. Again, very easy to sharpen in the field if need be. And clean up for that matter. All right. Third knife that I have on me at some point, not to be disclosed because it's usually tucked, it's going to be a fixed blade Chris Reeve Professional Soldier. Super lightweight S35V steel. This is going to be an exotic one. This is somewhere that's tucked up as a backup to a backup, and uh, it does have the Chris Reeve holster right here, so got some paracord on it for no other reason than just for a quick grab handle if I need to grab it. But this is also on me in some capacity all the time somewhere. Chris Reeve, professional soldier, super cool knife. All right, so that's basically, oh, I forgot my pen. You guys have seen this one before too, but it's my Hogue tactical pen. Nope, not sponsored. All of this stuff is stuff that I picked up on my own accord. It's what I use on a daily basis. And I like, like if you guys have seen my video on this pen, I'll put a link to this one as well. Um, I did a whole video on this pen, why I like it, but it's a good pen first and foremost. And that's why I like it. I carry with it. It's easily cleaned in the capacity of being a paramedic. I can wipe it down. I don't have to worry about nooks and crannies, stuff like that. And more than anything, it just flies under the radar, works really well. And I can do one-handed operation. Huge for me at work. So the Hogue tactical pen. All right, guys. All right. Believe it or not, I actually forgot more stuff on the right side outside of that pocket. I carry a lot of stuff, a lot more than I realize I do. First, it's going to be a roll of tape. It's so great for uh, taping down IVs, bandages, stuff like that. I just have it on a roll dispenser on one of my pockets. And then on the outside also, one of my favorite tools, my Leatherman Raptors. Yes, my trauma shears. They are more than trauma shears. And I, I started a video on these and I need to go back and do them, but I have a few pairs of these. I love my Leatherman Raptors and uh, I usually have a pair of these on me as well. I'm not going to go into all the benefits of them other than they're super strong. They always cut through what I need them to and they're true shears and then I don't need to sit there and keep going like that. I can actually just run it right up some fabric and cut off what I need and get people either trauma naked or medical naked as needed. So Leatherman Raptors also on me as part of my EDC. Okay, guys, left side pocket down on the front left, real easy. You can't be a good medic if you don't have a good set of ears. Uh, 3M, again, make a lot of good stuff. So for me, I've got Litman's Cardiology 4s in a cool blue color with blackout. So those are my ears. Dual bell, um, you can say peed side, full size, but really like these. All right. I just dumped them. Oops. 
All right, so before I get to my duty belt, I know this is all just in my pockets. This is a little ridiculous, right? So I do carry carabiners on me. This one's usually on my front loop. It's great for having keys on there, but more so than not, I like having a legit carabiner. One is actually weight bearing in case I need to rig something up or we need to use it for a true carabiner use rather than just looking stylish and looking the part. The other reason I use carabiners and carry them on me often is because I tend to hang stuff. So if I'm in the back and need to hang some fluids, maybe multiple bags, it's really easy to get these through a bag of saline, put them, hook them up on top of the rig, and I've now got gravity doing my work for me and I don't have to go around looking for a pole or anything like that. I can just grab them and just go. So I usually have carabiners on me. This one's usually on my front. All right, and now let's talk duty belt. So for my duty belt, it's really simple. I have a Bianchi AccuMold, nothing super ridiculous here. It's a two inch duty belt. I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys around it here very quickly. So on my, I guess I'll stick with the left side. So on my left side, I do have an 1110 tourniquet holder. And on the inside, I do have a North American Cat 7 tourniquet. This is for my own personal use should the need arise. This is not for patients or anything like that. This is my own or my partner's if I need a quick deploy. The only thing I'm going to say about this is, guys, make sure you get a good quality tourniquet. Go out to North American Rescue. You don't go out and just buy the cheapest one that you can find because when you need them, they'll, they may or may not work. I'm not going to say one way or the other. You know, everybody's got their own beliefs on it, but I tend to actually buy the real thing. And uh, North American Rescue was the one that started the whole cat thing. So you can also get soft tee wides and there's a couple of other ones, SWAT tees, if you don't have wet stuff, maybe I'll do a whole tourniquet special here in a little bit. Um, other things I can tell you is I took, um, I did use a Blade Tech uh, mount here on the back. So it goes right under my duty belt so I don't get it rolling around, kind of locks into place. This is my radio. I'm gonna shot myself in the face. This is my radio holster. We use uh, encrypted 800 megahertz Motorola Apex radios where I work. And I'll show you the lapel and what I use on up top here in just a second. Flashlight. So this is one of the big differences between my normal EDC where I showed you in addition to my phone in my left pocket, which I always have on me even at work and my keys, which have my RFID tags and stuff like that. I showed you guys before I have a little uh, surefire Titan on here. So at work work, that's not going to cut it for everything I need. So inside of a Night Eyes holster, which you can pick up anywhere, it's nothing special. I do have a Surefire P3X Fury, which is a thousand lumen legit uh, 3CR123A battery powered flashlight. So I like the optics on it, like the focus, really gets out, gives me some reach when I need to go out in the middle of the night and look for some stuff, spot some things. This is my main heavy hitter. So it's my P3X Fury from Surefire, much bigger than the little Titan. And then the other thing here on the Bianchi Acumol is I've also got um, leather, uh, excuse me. Yeah, a Leatherman. Here I actually have the AR-15, the uh, Mutt. Um, I use it on duty. So no, I'm not carrying the AR-15 on my normal stuff, but this, I actually tend to, it has everything I need on it. I've got the extra little bits. Um, if I find myself having to do some, you know, kind of more I know hardware related stuff, but I got the two bit sets and the driver and everything like that. I also have a regular old um, Leatherman as well, but I tend to keep the mutt on me on this for this setup for whatever reason. I don't know. I just tend to like it. Oh, I know why. Because it's got this hammer strike surface on it, which allows me to bash things if I need to. So Leatherman mutt on my duty belt. All right. Off of the duty belt. Next thing I'm going to show you is my lapel mic getting super interesting here, right? I told you guys I'd go all into the details. So it's going to be a Motorola. Usually got it rocking right up here with the in-ear monitor. So in my agency or my, my locale, we we're all on 800 megahertz. That's going to be police, fire, and EMS. We can all hear each other for the most part, and we can talk to each other if needed. And uh, so having an in-ear is really nice because I can hear what the other traffic is that's going on as I'm going from channel to channel and it can also stay on my bands as well. So think of it multi-band, 800 megahertz encrypted. Of course, people with scanners can't hear it, so it allows us to do it, and it gives me the added privacy to be discreet and listen to conversations that are going on outside of having a giant squawk box on me. So that's it. Um, what else can I tell you? So what else can I tell you about my loadout? Well, I always say my phone. I've got an iPhone 11 Pro and then my watch is now a Series 5. Um, other than that, all right, so other things I've had on me as my standard PPE 
that now it seems to be more critical than ever with droplet precautions is my eyewear. So I do tend to use my Oakley standard issues. These are radar paths and uh, they are photochromic. So I, these are great for droplet precaution. They're not an end all be all. You still need to generally use goggles if you're in a real serious situation. But for 90% of the time right now, I'm rocking the radar paths. Um, you, then these are photochromic so I can, they'll alter the level of tint as needed for me. So in the back of an ambulance or wherever I'm at on scene, they'll they'll go clear for me. They do a pretty good adequate job. I wish they would transition just a little bit quicker, but you know what? It's better than nothing, right? So I do have my Oakley standard issues and I do like the fact that they give me full coverage. And then the other thing that's top of mind right now with everybody is respirators. So I do have a 3M uh, N95, actually N100 respirator that I can actually use to protect myself from the crud. In conjunction with the eyewear, I tend to look somewhere between a fighter pilot, a paramedic, and a stormtrooper. Hopefully you guys can hear me, but you get the point. It's a nice sealed system. All right, so that's basically it. So I'll, unfortunately right now, sign of the times, heavy duty N95 and 100 respirators go with me all the time. All right. So that really covers off what I carry on me as a person. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of flip this thing. I'm gonna stop for a second. I'm gonna grab my backpack, show you what's the backpack itself, and then just talk about some of the things that I carry in general in it on a daily basis. And this will also translate over to the tactical side, but we'll cover both of those. So give me just a second. I'll be right back with the backpack. All right, guys, so I just covered what I usually have on me as a person, but one of the other things that I carry with me on a daily basis that goes everywhere is going to be my backpack and for that i want to share it with you it's a, a maxpedition rift blade it's a 30 liter uh pack that's actually expandable i've taken the waist the uh the waist cummerbund out of it i just it just gets in the way for what i'm needing i don't need the additional um you know the the displacement of weight to my hips because i'm not going to be doing any rucking or anything like that but i did just want to show you very quickly um and just talk about some of the things i generally have in this and kind of give you a tour so um at some point, I might actually do a video on the Rift Blade itself. I actually really like this pack. I've gone through a number of them. I've gone through a ton of 511s. I've gone through even some Arcteryx Leaf stuff. And for just the size and what I do on a daily basis, I actually really like this pack. It is part of the concealed carry line. It's actually got a concealment uh, sleeve here in the back where you can get in and stuff. But for the most part, like I said, it's just the right size of form and function. It allows me to do all my snack ops really well because let's be honest, a lot of stuff that we carry in here, some of our food to get us through at 12. So um, that's basically it. I do have a couple of key things I do want to show you in here that I care of. So another one is carabiners. I got another black diamond right here. And then up top, I also have another black diamond because I tend to typically hang this thing right up on our uh, cargo webbing on the front of the, uh, the front of the box. And it's a, a locking beaner, so I don't have to worry about this. I can lock it down if I need to and just kind of hang it so it's suspended. I've got everything right at arm's length if I need to. Because there are some things in it that I carry that are not just snack ops related, but also um, that are actually tools. So one of them, so in this front pocket generally here, I've got stuff as almost use it as like an auxiliary admin pouch if you ever think about it on the plate carrier. So I've got some stuff. I've got extra pens. I've got some sanitizers. I've got like my electrical cords and stuff for my chargers that I might need to get to. I usually carry an anchor lithium ion battery as a secondary in case I need to charge something very quickly. We run out of um, ports or maybe something like a converter goes out or something like that. But other stuff, I got this really cool uh, meta quick reference guide that I got from uh ready warrior llc i do not receive any monies from this i actually paid this guy he's an old uh, 18 delta and uh, he put together a really cool quick chart for some combat medicine type stuff as a quick reference so i carry one of these with me i like supporting other people in the field so that was uh, an unintentional shout out like i said i paid the guy so i don't know the guy personally um i just saw him on instagram and i ordered his product and i thought it was pretty cool he he, he, he had makes him send you a cool little note and sends thanks so other things, right in the rain pad. I've always got one with me. I should have said this is also my front pocket. I have one of these, but I forgot about it in my pants. I always have a pad of paper on me. And then just other stuff like 12 lead cheat sheets, stuff like that. Um, just in case I have some downtime and I want to go back and review some ACLS protocols. All right. Up top, right now, given the sign of the times, I've got extra clear ponchos that are emergency PPE if I need them. And then I've just got more cables, stuff like that. 
this typically, I don't generally have the extra ponchos in there, just right now I do. I've also got extra uh, disposal N95 respirator masks. Then on the inside here, I've got a host of stuff like, here's another N95 right now, given the sign of the times. Other stuff, I've got some flushes in case I need them. Um, generally, I've got plenty of those. I have extra pens, forks, toothpaste, my own personal meds like Tylenol and ibuprofen, maybe some Benadryl, stuff like that, chapstick. Nothing really super crazy here, guys. I mean, this is just all functional, a toothbrush. All right, so the other thing I have in my pack that I just keep with me is one of those like weird Twilight Zone moments. I was actually on an off-duty someday and, and one person came up to me and said, here, I think you can actually use this. And it is a St. Michael the Archangel prayer on a card, which is kind of super cool. So for those of you guys that don't know, St. Michael is the patron saint. The archangel is the patron saint of first responders. And um, somebody just came up and gave it to me and it's super symbolic and it was kind of a weird moment. So I was like, all right, I probably should just keep this in there for good luck. So I do. Other stuff I have, super essential stuff like a Tide pen. These things are super wicked. Speaking of supernatural, where somebody comes up, these things are crazy. Like if you have a white duty shirt and you get some, I don't know, chocolate ice cream on them or something, it comes right off with these things. I don't know what they did to get that to work, but it's amazing. Chapstick, other stuff like that I've got in there kind of mentioned. The other thing that I actually took out of my bag, but I usually have in my front admin pouch of quick access is a thermoscan. Um, right now, I'm going through the little things like this, tech checking temperatures all of the time, obviously with fever being one of the, a cardinal marker for that we're looking out for for coronavirus. I'm going through a lot of my thermoscan um, caps. So super nice, accurate thermoscan. This is actually the one that's got discrimination for different age groups on it, infant, toddler, and adult size. So it does a really good job. So I probably use this thing way more than I should. I picked it up out of my own money. And then other stuff I've got in my bag is just a lot of empty storage. I usually have my iPad Pro in here. And then I've also got a book that I'm going through right now, just as a refresher, is Rapid Interpretation of EKGs. This is a med school book. It's a really good one, guys. If you're looking to brush up, if you're a paramedic and you're looking to brush up and just kind of go back and do some cardiology stuff, I can't recommend this book enough. So that's really basically the tour of the backpack. I got a lot of morale patches in here um, that I've picked up over a long period of time. I just kind of keep them in that. Velcro backing in there, maybe rock something out a little different on a daily basis. But this is really the backpack, guys, that I carry. Again, it's the uh, Maxpedition Rift Blade 30 liter. It's done a great job. It's a couple of years old now, and it just looks amazing. It just keeps going and going and going. It's got laser cut molly on it, stuff like that. So, so that is really it for this one, guys. I just want to keep the content going, especially as we're all in this lockdown state. If I'm not working out on the streets and dealing with this crud on a very intimate level, I want to make sure that. I'm at least bringing some relief to you guys in just content so you guys can kick back and have something new to watch, stuff like that. It all just gives us a little bit of sense of normalcy in what we're doing on an everyday basis in not normal times, for sure. This is unprecedented. Hopefully, you guys are staying safe. Hopefully, you guys have everything that you need. And uh, hopefully, I don't run into you on the streets kind of a thing. But for the most part, you know, that's really it on this one. Guys, like, comment, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified, that kind of stuff. Part three will be more of the tactical side, and I'll be here, probably publish that in the next week or so. I'm going to be on truck for the next couple days, but that's basically it. Until next time, guys, stay safe.